Okay, so I've managed to get uh, Amiga CD32 working, and there's a there's a really good thing about that in a second. I'll show you, but I just wanted to show uh, the command for measuring the temperature on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm using the uh, Pi Moroni fan shim, uh, which is excellent, uh, and you'll see how well it cools it down. Uh, if you want to just check your temperature, copy this command into terminal. Thanks to Rob Ert for this, he left a comment on my previous video and also told me how to um, delay it by 30 seconds um, or repeat every 30 seconds with the watch command. So here you go, so it's 57 degrees at the moment. Uh, but if I copy this one in, it will check every 30 seconds. And this will be useful because I'm about to overclock, not in this video, but in another video. Uh, so I hit that. So it's now going to check every 30 seconds. So what I'll do is move it over there. And we'll start up FSUAE. And then move this. Let's try and create a bit of room. I want to get the temperature in the corner of the picture uh, of this video. Right, so I've, I've got um, a saved template for CD32. So I'm running CD32. I've got the kick ROM installed. Uh, if I go to CD, images. Now the thing that I couldn't get to work before was Super Skid Marks. Um, so I found an ISO for Super Skid Marks. And I tried it on the A1200 and I was stuck on the menu and it wouldn't let me get past the menu. Uh, but this one gets you straight in uh, with the joypad working straight away. So you can see a different splash screen. You see my temperature's gone up a little bit there. The fan's still not on because my fan is uh, set to kick in at 65. So it might kick in soon. Here we go, so here's the menu for Super Skid Marks. Uh, so if I do Start Match Race, Read CD, let's pick around, let's go for Track 3, and this is just one of my all time favourite racing games. It plays so well. And as a multiplayer game, it is amazing. Oh, bit of a slow start from me. Oh, that was lucky. Someone bumped me past that. Interesting, no, um, no skid marks on the floor. I don't know if that's because of the amount of cars that are on the track, but the original uh, version I used to play on the Amiga 600 used to leave it behind. And this, I think, is the latest version uh, of this game. Oh, come on. That's nice. My fans just come on. So you'll see that temperature, what was it last? 63, look at the track. Uh, so next time it will refresh, that will drop right down I bet. Fifty eight. Oh come on, should have gone tight. This is the one. There you go. So that's Super Skid Marks. Um, well, let's just show a little bit more uh, around the navigation. So we've got change cars. And this seems to be different, different styles of racing, like faster. I like the classic one. Uh, different car. Hard drive installed, don't know what that is. I guess that's if you had an A1200. So I also wanted to show you uh, why I didn't play that in high res. Uh, although, actually I think it's probably just because I'm sat way too close to the screen. So if I 
let's pick a different track this time. So as you can see, the cars are tiny, and I prefer it with the cars bigger. It's nice that you can see more of the track. But I think, oh, I like these bumpy tracks. Yeah, I prefer just it to be a bit bit more zoomed in, really. Uh, it's just got a nicer feel. But I guess I, guess I can see why you play it in high res, uh, especially for multiplayer games, uh, and just be able to see more of the track. But as you can see, it runs just as it should as well. Really nice and smooth. Graphics look decent. So really pleased to be able to get that up and running. I'll be playing a lot more of that. Right, so another CD game would be Sensible Soccer. And you've got to load the ISO file. And it seems to find all the other tracks of that file. So a lot of the time the CD32 versions uh, obviously were on a CD uh, and they just made use of better sound so they used CD quality sound for music and various things in the background um, but actually the games often were the same sort of thing that you'd get on an A1200. Fans just come on, so it's 62 at the moment. So it seems to play the same sort of speed seems to look pretty much the same as my other, uh, the Amiga 500, Amiga 600 version. But nice that you don't have to, because you're using a, an ISO image, it's nice that you just have to select the one image. There may be a way of doing this with the floppy disk where it automatically finds the others, but I haven't managed to find it at the moment. Oh, is that, is that penalty? No. I suppose they that way too quick. Oh, nearly. Right, so, Sensible Soccer, which you saw in my previous Amiga video. Brilliant game. Uh, I also looked for uh, a game that I had back in the day, Brutal Sports Football. And this is a bit of fun. Uh, again, this is the Amiga CD. So the Amiga CD32 versions are obviously a lot bigger files, but it usually is just an audio thing. And sometimes you get, um, you know, a better intro, uh, a bit of a bit of full motion video, something like that. And the Amiga CD32 had four buttons, but I don't know how. I haven't, I haven't looked into configuring that. Because a lot of these games were made for the Amiga 500, they they do seem to still use just one button. Oh, let's be honest. So, you know, obviously they had a lot more room so they could put more things on the disc. I don't know the controls on this, but if you run this, oh, no, oh, okay, that didn't go so well. before they go. Oh, I see it says CD32 on the side there. Oh, there's a, there's a sword there. I did have this back in the day. I can't remember what it was. I mean, I remember enjoying playing it, but I can't, I don't think I played it an awful lot. That definitely looked like I was going to score. <laughs> what was that? Ice cubes or something.
No, no, no. Okay, so you can see Brutal Sports Football, uh, which which was very decent for its time. Uh, so I think that's the only CD32 games I've got here. And I just wanted to show uh, one more game, which is not a CD32 game. I think this is a homebrew game. And it's a bit like the old uh, arcade game Thrust, uh, but you can shoot in this. Oh, different, different intro. Ah, so I need to change. I think that's just telling me there's no disc. So what I need to do is change this uh, to Amiga 500. Go to the CD, eject the CD, pop the floppy in. Hit start. You can see if you've been watching my fan in the corner, it hasn't really been troubled. Uh, the fans come on very occasionally uh, and then pretty much straight away goes off again. Be more interesting when I'm overclocking and when I'm running things like if I can get the Sega Saturn emulator to work, uh, if I can get the um, PlayStation 1 emulator to work as well. So this works. Two pilots race, dogfight, mission. Several different options in here. Um, so you've got thrust with the, the button and you want to be picking up the little tiny cubes and shooting these guys. Oh, but not but not driving into them. And it's a really nice gameplay. Is he still going to be there? Oh no, I've killed him now. Fans just come on. So I'm not sure how careful you've got to be on that. Oh, that was close. But these games are very much about the landing. There you go. What was that? There must be two of them. And you've got to thrust away from all the walls and everything. It just, it's an old school style of gameplay, but I really like it. And I like the fact that you've got the shoot as well. But when you shoot, you've, you've got to face someone, so you've got to be a bit more risky with your gameplay. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Right, maybe I go to the side. There you go. So I'm really happy with my Pi 4 uh, and very happy with my fan as well. Uh, it's a great system and uh, there'll be more, I'll be trying more things as time goes on. So thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.